Fruitopia. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Fruitopia. My name is Lynx, and I'm so glad to see your happy, smiling faces here today in this new episode. Today, we're going to be doing things that uh, I hate to do more than anything, and that is diamond strip mining, which so far has uh, has turned out pretty well because it looks like we have three blocks of diamond right here in front of me. But uh, today I'm going to show you guys how I do diamond strip mines and how you can follow the same procedures and maybe get a bunch of stuff too. Um, because if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. So the first thing is you want to get down to uh, anywhere below 16 blocks underground. And of course, I like to make my diamond strip mines look decent. So I like to replace the floor, make the floors look nice. And then usually what I'll do is I'll dig a two square uh, deep tunnel and I'll just keep going all the way in. Now, if I see something that I like, um, oops, I gotta turn that back on. If I see something that I like, then I will uh, mine it and then of course put cobblestone back in its place. Now, when I'm walking down the halls and I'm like looking in a hall that's on the left, usually I'll just put one piece of cobblestone in the middle. That way, when I'm running down the hall, I don't accidentally walk into one of the other tunnels. But I never uh, dig up or anything like that. It's usually, I mean, if I do, I'll usually put a cobblestone back in its place. Now, another thing is, I always keep a couple chests with me, with wood and things like that. And as you guys can see, I've already been racking up items in this thing. I mean, I've got redstone for days. I've got 34 lapis. I mean, it's just like going crazy. Now, the best thing to do is collect your coal so you can save that back to your base. And as far as smelting um always use bring a bucket and then of course make more buckets with the iron that you've uh accumulated down in your mines that way you can use your bucket full of uh full of lava because you're gonna find tons of it and just use the lava to uh smelt your stuff just like that usually what i do is i try to make sure i don't have the lava bucket equipped when i right click the uh furnace because Nine times out of ten, nothing happens, but sometimes I misclick and I'll end up setting lava out and setting myself on fire. So usually it's it's best to right click with something else, just to be safe. And then of course, now that we have this stone cutter, which I think is the most awesome thing ever created, um, it makes it easier to stone cut your floors to make your floors look nice, make your walls look nice and whatnot. Because I like to make my uh, my underground tunnels look really cool. So, and of course this uh, path here. It takes me all the way up. I kind of made it a little bit wavy. It's not just one straight uh, down downward staircase or whatever, because I want to actually come back and um, use uh, use the rail carts that we've gotten in the rails and make a uh, a rail system that'll actually take us down here rather than just having to walk down in like a boring normal way. Boop boop. Now, of course, any tunnels that I'm not using, which because this is strictly for strip mining only, um, the best thing to do once I collect all this iron and stuff that's in these other areas, the best thing I can do is block these other tunnels off. That way I don't get lost trying to go back to my strip mine. Okay, there we go. So I got all those resources from over there, and then I blocked off the tunnel. That way I don't go back in that direction. And now we can just kind of grab all these other resources here. And then block it back up. There we go. And there's some more stuff up here too. Let's go ahead and grab this all. I actually left quite a bit of stuff. Okay, so and another thing is you want to make sure you bring enough food to keep you keep you alive down here, and make sure you bring some sticks with you so you have like an unlimited supply. Of, well, not unlimited, but you have a huge supply of tools you can make because you can always use your iron to make more tools. Let's go ahead and grab these diamonds here. Ooh, there's a lot more than I thought there was gonna be. Oh. Oh, yes. Wait. How many diamonds do we have? We have two. Oh, we don't have an anvil. I was going to say we could use that book that gives us more diamond, but I guess we can't use it yet. 
You gotta make an anvil for one of those. You, if you are able to get that enchant, that's, uh, I think it's looting three. One, two, and three. Three is the best. You can get looting three and put that on a diamond pickaxe and use that for looting more diamonds. I mean, you are going to be getting tons of diamonds. I usually wouldn't recommend using that uh, pickaxe for anything else, like keep it in a safe place. I've been on servers where I had looting three and could not get another one. And I used it forever. On I think it was on a sword. And I used it for killing uh, skeletons at a skeleton spawner to uh, farm arrows and stuff. And I died and I could not find that sword because it was out in the middle of nowhere. And I was so sad. And I couldn't find another uh, enchant. Well, and I couldn't make one either. Like, I tried everything I could and I could not replicate that enchant for nothing. It was it was very heartbreaking. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys what I do. Um, we're going to pretend this is a, a new one here. And usually what you want to do is you want to make sure the blocks are in, are one block apart. That way you're not missing anything. So if you're on this side, you can see what's right here. And if you're on this side, you see what's right here. So you're basically saving yourself some time. And uh, so you don't have to sit there and just dig everywhere. So with me digging down this block here, I, I can tell what's going to be on the left and right side of me um for the next strip mine that i'll be doing in the next in the next line and you basically just want to go as far as you as far as you'd like um for this one here i've been kind of going a decent distance because there's a uh, there's a lava pit and um, some water at the end of this tunnel and that's pretty much where i've been stopping so we're going to work our way to that and if every once in a while you want to get some extra light in here just uh break that one wall down but keep at least one on the top or the bottom that way uh, that way you don't accidentally run into those rooms because for example if you leave this open and You're running down the hall Sometimes you'll get you'll end up walking like this if you're not careful and you'll get stuck And it'll slow you down when you're trying to run down these long tunnels because some people like to make super super long tunnels Some people don't like to make super long tunnels. I personally do so it just uh, it makes it easier because if you have like a ton of tunnels uh, If you're not careful you can get super lost and so I like to keep it pretty simple and like this right here, since this uh, dug into uh, basically where another tunnel would be, I'm just going to put some cobblestone here. That way when I go digging down this tunnel, um, there already be a wall here blocking me between, uh, blocking me from the other tunnel. And sometimes you'll be mining for a while and you won't find anything, which sucks, but you know, um, you just got to keep going. Uh, sometimes you'll, you'll hit a jackpot. Like one of the tunnels I went in is where I got all that lapis from. So, it's got to keep going. But this is usually anywhere between, I think it's uh, 16 and below. I think even 13 and below is even better if you're trying to find diamond. Um, just keep strip mining and you'll you'll find a bunch of it. If you, ever, if you ever get lost and you're wondering if you went too far down a tunnel, just dig down the wall to your right and see if that tunnel is still going. So it looks like there's the lava there. So it looks like we got a little bit further to go. So we're at the end of this tunnel. So let's put another piece of cobblestone there. Did I bring a shovel with me? No, I didn't. Okay. And then you just kind of get rid of whatever's in your path and just keep going. So far, this tunnel hasn't been too promising. Getting some zombies, though. Since I'm out of torches, we'll just break down this middle wall to kind of give us a little bit of light. Let's kind of put that there. Go. And sometimes when you're digging the, the strip mines, sometimes you actually will end up going into an area where it's just a big open cave that you can get all kinds of resources. Like here, you can go way up here and there's all these little tunnels and such. Which is cool because, you know, you can go and see what other resources are to be found. But I personally don't like to wander too much because... Um, I get lost really easily, but if you're if you're good at uh, exploring and not getting lost, then I it's it's a great way to to run around and not have to dig very much and just go get some resources. But it looks looks like we got some obsidian right here, which is something we definitely need to get. But at least now we can uh, we can at least make one diamond pickaxe. And it sounds like there's something going on on this side. So when we do another strip mine in that direction, I'm sure we'll probably end up finding some kind of uh, underground spawner or something over there in that direction. But see now, 
If we want to go back to the beginning, we can just run right down this hall right here. And all of these tunnels will all connect back to the middle. Of course, I can't sprint because my hunger bar is uh, going down, but normally you'd be able to just sprint on through. But of course, like I said, these little spots right here where it's an opening, um, you gotta be careful. Now, when it comes to lava, I usually leave the lava alone. Um, if there's like lava that's going under one of your walls, like for example, this is gonna be a, this is basically a wall, and this one right here is a wall. So what I would do is I would block the top areas like right about here I put cobblestone okay and then I put floor for cobblestone so you can you can use the lava to your advantage the lava is lighting up your tunnel and if need be you could probably get some lava from it but you don't have to worry about falling into the lava when you walk down your path because the cobblestone right here is blocking you from falling into the lava so it kind of works out so you don't have to use any torches and you've got some kind of lava source but you can just keep on going and keep on mining without having to worry about anything. It looks like this lava right here is going to be an issue, though. It looks like it's trying to mess up our flow here. See if we can get rid of it. There we go. I wanted to ruin my chances of getting this. Oh, no. It's, yeah, it's definitely going to... Oh, I got one piece. There we go. I got some. Okay. Then we'll just put the floor here. And then since that is going to be a tunnel, we'll just go like this. That way we can't fall into the lava. That can stay there. That lava can flow as much as it wants. It's not going to be an issue for me. I can actually even just keep digging along this way. And I don't have to worry about it because it can't get to me. And I won't have to worry about falling into it either. Oops. Yeah, see? And of course, if I were to go down this other tunnel, right here in the middle, I would just have to make sure that I fix uh, the lava flow so we can't have it coming into the room like that. So we're going to have to try and fix it the best we can, which in this one, we'd have to actually probably just bring this wall down for a second and see where the lava is coming from. Sometimes you don't have a choice, but to just completely abandon um, some uh, some tunnels, like there's just no way around it. There's just no safe way to mine that strip mine. And in that case, I would usually just say, put like a torch or something in it that blocks it and lets you know that you've already cleared it and there's no reason to be there. What I used to do is I used to save my torches. And once the tunnel was finished, I would either place a tunnel in the door or I'd place a tunnel, or not a tunnel, a torch in the door of the tunnel or a torch at the top of the door of the tunnel. And that would let me know that that strip mine has been completely finished and no reason to go back down it again. And I would do that in each tunnel. That way I knew where I left off. And it also let people know that were playing with me uh, on my private servers and whatnot that that tunnel was no, there was no reason to go down it and waste their time because all the resources have already been mined out of it. This might actually be the side that we're probably going to have to not be able to um, do a strip mine on because of that lava. Until we're able to somehow block it from continuing. Yeah, it looks like it's going to keep flowing through here. Whoops. Too far. Yeah, that's definitely a, a good flowing lava pit right there. Which is cool, though, because if we need lava, there's plenty of it. And it's right here near our uh, crafting tables and such. So we can continue getting it to use for uh, smelting. So I'll just clear this out a little bit. You can actually see it a little bit better and get to it a little bit better. There we go. Like a little underground forge. You gotta be careful because you don't want to dig too high up and all of a sudden lava start pouring down on this from the ceiling either. That would not be good. Looks like it's all about that level, though, so it doesn't look like there's any above it. So now that we have some diamonds, let's go ahead and make us a diamond pickaxe. We'll just make one for now. And we'll save the rest of the diamonds for later. Okay, and let's go down here and get us some obsidian. Okay, here we go. I can't remember how many we need for a ender portal. I think it's like, was it four across and then like uh, five down or something? 
I don't remember. I remember how to make one, I just can't remember any blocks it. Oh crap, I missed that one. But hey, at least now we can make an enchanting table. Okay, so we got 13 obsidian, which we can make more if we had a bucket of water, we could just throw it on here, but I think that's more than enough for what we're doing now. It's not like we're gonna make another portal just yet anyway. At least we now have enough to at least make a enchanting table, which is something that I've been wanting for such a long time. Because I've been wanting to enchant my stuff. Even if it's only iron, hey, at least it's enchanted. Because those uh, those pillagers are just whooping us right now. So anything to fight back against those guys would be amazing. Let's go ahead and get some of this cobblestone that's melted here. I need to go ahead and just make another uh, another one or two uh, furnaces is what I really need to do so we can get this stuff going here. There we go. And sometimes you got to. Sometimes you have to just sit there and just make a bunch of furnaces. I mean, it's not like it's going to cost you any resources because you've got all these buckets of lava you can be using at your advantage. So. Now a lot of these resources I can actually leave down here, like the redstone and uh, a lot of this cobblestone and, and stuff like that I could just leave down here instead of bringing with me. Eventually once I get my minecart system set up I can, you know, throw all my stuff into a chest and ship it all the way back up to the mainland of the base. But right now basically the only stuff that I would probably take with me is like the coal and maybe the iron and uh, maybe the lapis. Um, and it'd be a couple tools. Aha! And eventually you will find diamond. Actually, I think I'm gonna save this diamond and this lapis until uh, I can get this uh, this diamond pickaxe enchanted with that loot uh, enchant because that way we can uh, get a bunch more diamond from this. Get to how many there is so we can see them all. There's a bunch of stuff here. Ooh, I think we might have found the jackpot here, guys. And it's right here at the end of the other tunnels. Wow. It literally was right beside us this whole time. I guess we might as well save it for the iron, too, so we can get all this iron. Cool. So I think what we need to do is uh, head back and get this diamond pickaxe enchanted. Get us an enchanting table. And uh, come back here and get the rest of this diamond. So that is it for this episode of Fruitopia, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit lengthy. Um, and there wasn't really a lot going on. But it was more of a tutorial episode, I guess, more than anything. I hope you guys are able to learn something. And I hope it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to find diamond and other resources in the future for you. If you like this video, support Fruitopia. Hit this like button. And uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. And of course, guys, my name is Lynx. And I will see you in the next episode of Fruitopia. Next time on Fruitopia. Oh! Uh... Hehehehe! <laughs>